Anybody know what this place is? This is Gettysburg. This is where they fought the Battle of Gettysburg. 50,000 men died right here on this field, fighting the same fight that we're still fighting amongst ourselves today. This green field right here was painted red, bubbling with the blood of young boys, smoke and hot lead pouring right through their bodies. Listen to their souls, men. I killed my brother with malice in my heart. Hatred destroyed my family. You listen, and you take a lesson from the dead. If we don't come together right now on this hollow ground, we too will be destroyed, just like they were. Now, I don't care if you like each other or not. But you will respect each other. And maybe, I don't know, maybe we'll learn to play this game like men. We are the Titans, mighty, mighty Titans. I have no clue what that's from. Remember the Titans. Remember the Titans? What the heck? She just said it. I know. We are the Titans, the Mighty I, Mighty Titans. I, but I just recently watched that movie, and I don't remember that scene. They at wake them up all. at, like, four in the morning, and they go Earlier, the three in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like it's nothing. Because they they're at Gettysburg College in Pennsylvania. Yeah. I don't remember that scene at all. Which, in hindsight, I guess now as an adult, I realize, hey, he was in glory. <laughs> he yeah. was there. Dope. No, not in the, the the Massachusetts regiment wasn't at Gettysburg. No, I'm saying Denzel was. Denzel was what? Yeah, Denzel Glory, was in Glory. Glory, the movie. Yeah, Glory. Yeah, but in Glory, none of the there was they didn't do the battle of Gettysburg in Glory. Yeah, but he was still in the Civil War. Oh my gosh. Okay. Anyways, he was in the Civil War. Yes. Good old yeah. Denzel. Yeah. We love that guy. Good old Denzi. Yes. Daddy O Denzel. Denzel. Heck Denzi. yeah. All right. Well, welcome back to yet another episode of Bump That. Bump That episode one forty two. If you don't know who we are, we've got Brian in this corner. Left side. We've got KT down below. Why are you smiling? I, I no, strong. You're supposed to say strong side. You blew oh, it. Sorry. Blew oh, it. I'm sorry. Blew I like it. the why are you smiling bit. Ah, uh, well, that's sorry. Football's fun, sir. Fun, sir. <laughs> yes. No. Well, it's not fun anymore, is it? Oh, not no, it's no, no, not fun bit. at all. No, <laughs> sir. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna tell you why. We're gonna have fun football. Go, sorry, sir. Okay. And I'm Ileana, your host, and we are siblings who have a love for all things movies, video games, TV shows, all things of that sort, and decide to talk about it here on the internet with all of you people, and here you are listening. So, welcome! Katie, I would just like to say I like that we're both in uh, nerdy t-shirts today. You're wearing Incredibles, and I'm wearing my Zelda shirt. So I'm It was just... career day at, t at school, and I want to be a superhero when I grow up. Oh yeah, me too. Ah, oh, dang it! I just remember I left. I had my mug, also my Incredibles mug, and I had to set it down, and I never got it back. Uh, I gotta. <laughs> I gotta go get that. Uh, but anyways, we're y'all. What's so great about it? It's incredible. It matches my shirt. It, yeah. Um. No. Okay. <laughs> we we've got to talk because chunk zone is happening, and I can't wait to get there because we got some things to talk about. I almost want to go back to our first video and listen to us go, oh, that's not that bad. Oh, that's not that bad. Oh, that's not that bad. <laughs> Actually, I think you guys, I never said officially anything, but I like the episode. <gasps> oh my gosh. No, you didn't. So, All right. This is called a tease. This is a tease for the audience. Whoa. Stay tuned for the chunk because... Whoa. Difference of uh, thoughts here. So uh, we will. He, he is specifying episode five. <laughs> we'll talk about it in the chunk. But let's go ahead and jump into the news first. All right. 
So, Brian, did you write this one or did Katie? I can't remember. I did. Okay. Sister Katie did. All right. So the first one is Ugh. Jerry Bruckheimer. Did I say that right? Is it Brook? Brook or Brook? Yes. Brook. 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 Heimer says that the next Pirates of the Caribbean film will be a, re a reboot. No Captain Jack Sparrow. A reboot. So that means... Like like, it's like different pirates, maybe different location, different everything. It'll just have. Doesn't reboot in it. usually mean like restarting the series all over again? Mm, like I don't know what they want to do. Not starting all over, but no. just putting in another location. Um, I think people, I think there's so much the you can do with pirates. You know, Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah, I don't even like. Obviously, you don't want to do the Johnny Depp, Jack Sparrow thing. I don't think you want no, to do that. No, those are do something done. Different. Those are over with. Also, he's much older now. Um, but I don't want them to give it the Star Wars treatment where they just start popping out a whole bunch of pirates content all of a sudden. A whole bunch. They already of did that. Well, let's, let's do one. I think you're gonna let's do one. See if it works, and then we'll do more. Now. Okay, so film. That's not a TV show. This would be a movie. It's a movie. Okay, so. That do you think they would have like after. the? Do you think they would have, do like the supernatural stuff like they did in all the other ones with ghosts and Davy Jones so. and Kraken? Um, yeah, that just makes sense for the world that they've already established. Or yeah. or keep it more established, like more historical pirates, like political type stuff. Yo ho, yo ho. No, not not political, but just more. Maybe ma make it more. It'd still be a swashbuckler like Zorro or Indiana Jones kind of action, but not not so much like the ghost story part of it. I guess if that makes sense. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that makes maybe sense. Maybe take that part or out. or having so many mythical creatures like the Kraken. Yeah. Maybe <clears throat> no, I I like it with that. It gives it a little bit of flair. It takes your eyes onto something new. Yeah, bring as opposed in mermaids, to just looking at boats and Cthulhu. water and people. Bring it all. Oh, it won't be more Cthulhu. rape. More what? I'm what? sorry. What did you just say? More more raping. It's that... pirates. Pirates is supposed to be like raping wenches and. That is We're very canceled. pirate behavior. Yes, but I will have to believe that I mean... word. It's Pirates of the Caribbean, man. Yeah, um, hopefully they don't do that because it is a Disney IP. So, just saying. That would be very, very awkward. Yeah, we'll see. And wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Moving uh, on, please. Yeah, all right. Captain Jack, please, no! Okay. Moving on! All right. So Someone getting... cancel him. We're getting the first look at Beetlejuice Too late. 2. All right. What did you guys think? Beetlejuice 2. I think I don't really care about Beetlejuice. I'm sorry. I just, I never, I, I, I like never really it. liked it. I never liked the first movie. I like the first one. I We watch it every year, Wesley and I. Yeah. Um, in fact, one of my earliest memories living in Germany was watching it on our little TV. Um, actually, I think it was at someone's house, and it was on the TV, and I don't know why, but I remembered that. So um, we're, we're getting, though, the same actors. We're getting Winona Ryder. We're getting whatever, the Michael Keaton guy. Um, uh, oh, gosh, what's her name? Ortega. Catherine O'Hara. Catherine O'Hara. No, and then Je Catherine is it Jenna. Catherine O'Hara. Jenna Ortega. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was yeah. not in the original. He, I know. That's not what I meant. <laughs> but I'm just saying actors. I don't even think she was alive. No, she was not. Well, um, we also have uh, Brian's favorite, Monica Bellucci. Uh, what? You love Monica Yikes. Bellucci. Let's see. Yeah, I know. Ooh, goodness. What? Justin I don't understand. Yeah. Willem Dafoe, Justin Thoreau. Yeah. Uh, what's his face is still behind this one as well. We've got Tim Burton coming back to do this one. Ooh, sorry. Yep. Coming back to do this one, so that's cool. Um, the release date is in September, September 6th. Um, uh, yeah, that's all I got. Perfect for Halloween. 
Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, the only thing that's really different is that Alec Baldwin and Gina Davis are not going to be in this one. They were the couple in the first one. Um, I'm yes. not going to get into Alec, it this today. Alec I'm Baldwin. not going to get into it. I'm Alec. Anytime you Alec. mention Alec. his Alec. name, put it down. In it. Put it down. <laughs> There's children on set, Alec. Alec. <laughs> As my voice is cracking. <laughs> Oh my god. Alec! Alec, no! Alec, no! Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> You're already dead. Don't make it worse. Let no. me. I just want to show you how it's done. No. That's so bad. Oh my gosh. Now um, we're canceled. Yep. Liana and I, we're canceled. Uh, yeah, it was Brian last one, and now it's our, us this one. Sorry. Oh gosh. The Alec Baldwin stuff. Alec! Alec, <laughs> stop! Alec, I have a family. Alec! <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the first look looked really good. Um, looked very fun and interesting. So um. it looks very Tim Burtony. It looks whimsical and fun and spooky or whatever. So not spooky as in like a horror movie. Like spooky as in like Ooh. that's about as spooky as it gets. Ooh. As spooky as it gets was having Alec Baldwin's name on set. <laughs> Oh, jeez. That's as scary as it got. Hit the deck! Alec! No! <laughs> it's some woman screaming. Just, ah! <laughs> like in uh, Monsters vs. Aliens. Ah! Well, so no. Get her out of there! Um, It's a, a fla Frau Bruja every time. <laughs> like, exactly. Every time Alec's name is mentioned on set, there's a, a woman's shrill scream. <laughs> All right, we're going to be moving on. Speaking of women, whamons, all right? Margot Robbie. Women, women, women. Yes. yes. She uh, is producing The Sims Movie. What Sims is this? Like the video game on the PC, yeah. like Sims? Yeah, The Sims. Why is this going to... I think it's fabulous. What? I don't know why. What would I you th even do? There's not like a story. <clears throat> yeah, so I don't know. Maybe it'll be a um, an allegory. Maybe it I don't know if I'm using the right word. An allegory for um, maybe American it'll be a life. choose your own adventure movie. Yeah, or something. I, and it'll it'll just be silly. I anticipated just being. It'll be groundbreaking. There's got to be like silly. Uh, the inside jokes between the community who do who play sims and whatever i know one yeah. of them is like removing the ladder from the pool and like watching your sims person freak Jeez, out yeah um i don't i'm not a sims person some people really got into that game yeah, yeah. if you're a big fan of the did not i remember playing sims. sim city and uh that was a lot of fun but uh i i want that game to come to uh nintendo online nintendo switch online it's nintendo online is failing us um i i remember playing the sims game for the wii the, like the my sims i think it was called oh yeah you liked that game i loved that game it was so much fun it was cute too and the music, I didn't have yeah. for that. The music yeah. was rocking and that boom, boom, boom. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, good stuff. That that's that's good stuff right there. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Yeah, anyways, um, so Margot Robbie in The Sims. Is there any release date or any info, or just that this was announced at all? Um, there is a director. I forgot who it is. Uh, she's she does have credits. Um, I just can't remember who it is. Let's see. I. I'm trying to find some information. I don't. I think her name is Heather this. or something. I'm not quite sure why this is a thing. Movie. Uh, Direct. I'm looking and I'm not finding the information that I want. Kate Heron. Kate Heron. Yep. Does she have any other... And co-writer alongside Brioni Redman. Does she have any other movies already underneath her? Brian, you're the film guy. It's all new, all new people to me, so... Kate Heron? I, I read Which... that she's done something. Kate... Heron? Heron. Kate Heron. 
Let's see. Director and writer. The heron and the otter <laughs> are my friend. Oh my gosh. Known and for we are Loki, all connected. The TV show Loki. Uh, the TV show on Netflix, Sex Education. Five by five and daybreak, and some other stuff that I've never heard of before. She's worked with Asa Butterfield. That means something. Yeah, that's my boy. That's my boy. <laughs> um, I don't know if I'm gonna care about this, nor do I think it's gonna get as much of a scream that Barbie did. But oh, absolutely not. But. But It'll be fun. For the people who love The Sims and love Margot Robbie, good on them. They're getting something. At least they're still making movies. At least they're still, you know, pressing forward with well, yeah. weird, weird things. They're well, gonna, I, they're gonna ride that. I, I think that's what I like about it. That, that's the appeal. It's wacky. Yeah. Totally they're not letting wacky. anything stop them from making something interesting. I guess. Like, what's next? Um. I don't know. Teddy Ruxpin. Care Bears. Like real a live action kids. Care Bears. Who? But the Cabbage Patch Kids, except they're murderers. Gummy Bears. Gummy Bears. Haribo, the movie. <laughs> uh, yeah. Something something dumb like that. Yeah, let's go. Bring it Haribo, on. the movie. I want to see that one made. <laughs> Starring Jonah Hill as... Red gummy bear. And I'm so happy because I'm a gummy John bear. John Cena gummy bear. as the pineapple gummy bear. And your favorite, Kevin Hart as the green gummy bear. I don't know what flavor is that? Lime? Now now it's apple. Kevin Hart it's as like green the apple. apple gummy bear. And introducing Millie Bobby Brown as the Orange. Orange gummy bear. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid. Haribo the movie. See it now. Exactly how it's going to go. I see it now. What a cast. What what a cast. Let's go. Directed by uh, Christopher Nolan. <laughs> what? <laughs> now it's an action yeah, right. film. <laughs> Gosh. <sighs> okay. Uh, speaking of silly, funny, weird, wacky stuff, Peach <clears throat> Showtime. Peach Showtime. I gave this some some feedback, okay, we'll say, because I wasn't too hard on it. I gave it some feedback based on the demo, and I was like, ooh, I don't know. But after watching Katie play it while I was sick last week, um, I'm a fan. I am a fan. And this I, game is great. Not sponsored, but I went to Kung Fu Tea <laughs> and got the Princess Peach Showtime straw cap. That's so <laughs> with cute. With my boba tea. <laughs> Isn't it adorable? <laughs> yeah, I made Hunter. I think every Kung girl Fu. should play this game. Yes, I agree. I really do. Um... Or even little boys. I think little boys should play this my, too. My sons loved it. They were like, "Can we play the Princess Peach game? I want to play." Yeah, it. they're they like loved how much fun it looked. And it it's a lot of fun. Um, and getting on a high horse really quick. You know, we we had career day at school today, and afterwards I went back and and just chilled and played some Peach, and it's like its own career day. You want to yeah. be a cowboy? Be a cowboy. You want to be a uh, a dancer, a detective, a whatever, man. Yes, a patissiery, making pastries. Yes. You want to do those things? You can yeah, do it. Yeah, go do it. Um, the cool thing with this game was that the challenge comes in because it's not a very difficult game if you just play it straight through. The challenge comes in with you trying to get everything if you're a collector and you want to 100 percent the game or whatever trying to make sure you get every single little star gem at the bottom or sparkle or whatever they're called um is is actually a challenge it was quite difficult to be like did we miss it did we get it oh we missed one and then you oh! can't go back and get it you have to you finish have to the level and then go back and get it over 
Uh, that happened to me a bit today, and I was like, what the crap? So I would restart the level. You you don't have to finish it to the end. I would restart it. And I'm like, why can't I get this? And Because I even saw where it is, and it was just really challenging. There are some challenging moments. Yeah. I had to turn it off today. I rage quit. No way. In a boss battle. I was like, why can't I? What? This is dumb. Like, why can't I do this? So it does have its challenges, and it is very charming. Yes, it's super cute. Um, I like that Katie gave the the little girl Stella, the little <laughs> star girl. She gave her Arnold's voice, Arnold Schwarzenegger's voice, and that just made it even. We have better. to save the theater. <laughs> my dresses. Yeah. <laughs> Which color am I going to wear? I need a new color. <laughs> so. That Make me it. pretty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's so good and enjoyable. So definitely, I think worth it. I, I think worth it. I think that. I think so. Um, it's taking me a, a little while to beat it. Yeah. Um, so it's not just a sit down for 10 hours and beat it. You know, yeah. there, and, and there are some challenges you can do. You can go back and... Um, Replay. It definitely has replayability, mm -hmm. which is a big thing. It's just so charming. I think that's what I really like about it. The colors are yeah, super cute. and the little the dudes that you cute. save, they're yeah. so dumb. The, I can't the little stand it. helpless <laughs> guys that are like, oh no, I tripped and fell. Oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> I need a hero. Yeah. <laughs> that was yeah. That was the voices that I gave the little guys with the big noses. Oh, whatever will we do? I start giving them like buff voices. I'm like, oh, Princess Peach, what are we gonna do? Anyways, yeah. so that was a fun game. I gave it too much, maybe criticism, and I. It does not lag. It only lags in the cutscenes. But when Which you're playing so it, weird. smooth as butter. So weird that it does that. I don't understand. Don't know why, but that's, that's what it does. Just, I don't get it. All right. Um, additionally, oh. really quick. Additionally, oh. I just finished. Also, last night I finished um, Final Fantasy VII Remake, and so I'll be playing um, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth very soon. Um, that's a that's a game that just came out, so I'll be playing that. It and is springtime. You know. Yeah, and I got to tell you, the end of uh, Re. Rebirth, or excuse me, reboot, the remake, whatever. I was left like, I don't know what to do with myself right now. I don't feel well. It's one of those games. I feel sick. Yeah, I was just like, I'm so sad now. I'm sad. You're sad. You're sad. Yeah. You're sad. So, um, I recommend that game also if you haven't got it. You can get it for PS4 or PS5. All right. Uh, this one is some really cool news. Uh, this makes me excited to see this one. But Mel Brooks finally receives a Lifetime Achievement Oscar, which also makes you him... You better get a 10-minute standing ovation when he gets it. He, makes, he already got uh, it. What, how do you say this? EGOT? Oh. EGOT. Yeah, okay. An EGOT yeah, he member. Got an EGOT. That is awesome. Awesome. Good on him. How old is he now? Goodness He's gracious. He's like 90-something. Yeah. That I'm man like, is ancient. Good yeah. lord. Uh, I actually learned this week, in... he actually fought in World War II. Yeah. He He's is a World War II vet. 97. Dude needs a... He needs a good long rest. <laughs> <laughs> a good when, long when I was in college, my buddies and I would have Mel Brooks like marathons of movies. Nice. He needs yeah. a good long rest. He's lived a long life, man. Goodness gracious. Who was he in Hotel Transylvania 2? What? He was the He was the dad. original Dracula. Oh, yeah. gotcha. That makes sense. That's that's <laughs> cheeky and cute. Mm. I like stuff like that. <laughs> Uh, so he, Adam Sandler, he was like, "Hey, Papa, how are you?" <laughs> you know, like that. that funny. That's good, Brian. <laughs> uh, wait, 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 wait. Okay, hang on. Well, you keep talking about Mel Brooks. Oh. Uh. Where do white awesome. women at? That's one of my favorite lines. From Blazing Saddles. Where do white women at? 
Ah. Oh. Yes. What are, the, what are the original ones, though? Let me see. Yeah, this is what I want. Brian, as little sister looks up what she's looking up, what is one of your favorite lines? Oh, from Mel Brooks' movie? Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I just thought about a line from uh, Men in Tights. Oh, such a good and one. The, it's uh, Dom De Luis is there, and he's got like a, a, a iguana on his mm -hmm. shoulder because he's supposed to be like uh, Marlon Brando in The Godfather. He, yeah. And uh, the guy, I think the sheriff of Nottingham goes, "Oh, I, I, I think your lizard fell asleep," and the guy's like, "Oh, you know, in my old age." Oh, you mean that one? <laughs> <laughs> Such a throwaway line. It's just like, oh, yeah. I love those, those that are the comedy. best. Those that, are the best lines. That's such good comedy. Ugh, love that. And uh, I mean, everything in Spaceball, Spaceballs is great. Yeah. Man, now I feel like I want to go sit down and watch those movies just for a good like, <laughs> a good chuckle. <laughs> you know, just a little, <laughs> a little. <laughs> Was that like? Snot dripping out of your no, nose. No, it's whenever you're like, you you don't fully laugh, but you, and then like huff. Yeah, and the air comes out of your nose. Yeah, that's a good movie. Uh, a movie I recently a just movie. a movie a movie a movie. <laughs> hey, you guys gonna go watch a movie? Oh, What's no, that? Adam, Adam oh, it's this new kind of movie, motion picture. It's called a movie. <laughs> Movie. <laughs> um, a movie I just recently watched uh, the other night was the new Roadhouse movie. I don't know if you guys Roadhouse. have heard it or seen it or anything like that. Whoa! With, you watching um, that? That with, was with Jake name? Jimmy Jake Hall. Gyllenhaal. Yeah, with Jake Gyllenhaal. That was. I quite... said it first. We said it together. No, he he definitely said it before you. We You're said it together. Yeah, I think I have five seconds. I think I have a little delay. Oh. I have a little delay. So, no, but he said I that like five first, seconds man. ago, and you oh, were ten seconds come late, on. bro. Anyway, <laughs> why are you watching that piece of crap though? It wasn't. It was a it was a silly silly movie. Just have you to... seen the original? How no. was Connor? <gasps> he How was, was Connor the best part of the movie. Do you see his rear end in the movie? Yes, you do. I hear you twice. Do. Real whoa. Two times you see man butt of Conor McGregor, okay? And that was funny. Um, Dang. But he was such an unhinged character. It was so funny. Just completely cool. psychopathic. Um, but no, I actually did enjoy it. I thought it was a fun watch. A lot of, a lot of F-bombs, which were like so unnecessary. Completely unnecessary. But... Uh, whatever, you know, uh, as those types of movies go. Uh, what do you want to do? Uh. Overall, I enjoyed it. It was a little long, but <coughs> hey, it was a movie to watch. It was a movie to watch. You know, something good to put on. Uh, uh. And Jake Gyllenhaal looked like he trained his freaking butt off for that movie. Did you see his abs? Did you see any pictures of that? Goodness gracious. Well, he's always jacked in most movies he Yeah, does. but I'm he's... sure he had to kick his butt for that. Wait, oh. I've I've got breaking news. Uh-oh. <laughs> As of Someone three died. hours ago. Someone died. No. Oh, okay, good. Lizzo. <gasps> we talked about we talked about Lizzo back when she was being dumb. In Star Wars. <gasps> Lizzo quits. Lizzo. Music industry in shock post. Quit life. As Star what? says she's tired what? of being dragged by everyone and criticism over her looks after being hit by sexual oh harassment case and online backlash. This comes from the DailyMail.com. She quits. Wow. <coughs> Sucks. But Who she cares? was the one that was... Being a weenie, right? Yes. So this to is her, her people. This is yeah, her post she was. on Instagram, and I'm sure she posted on X or whatever. I'm getting tired of putting 
up with being dragged by everyone in my life on and on the internet. All I want is to make music and make people happy and help the world be a little bit better than how I found it. Then but go I'm, do it! Then go make your music! Yeah. But I'm starting to feel like the world doesn't want me in it. I'm constantly up against lies being told about me for clout and views, being the butt of every joke, or the joke every single time, but of how I look. My, ter my character being picked apart by people who don't know me and disrespecting my name. I didn't sign up for this. I quit. Peace sign. Um, okay. Then all do you gotta do is go make some good music. She has the. She's talented. She can she, make good she music. She does make great music. But she's played like. Um, frick! What kind of flute it was? It it was it was a historical flute. I can't remember who it belonged to, and she played it. She I think it was to play it. the magic it well. flute. Her okay. her problem comes <laughs> in with her being a toxic boss, with. Um, being a manipulative ma manipulative person, allegedly. Um, so that's where a lot of like the yucky stuff comes in. But that's Hollywood, baby. Like that's just the unfortunate thing. Like, girl, look, baby. I'm gonna put it this way. Nobody is stopping you. There's a difference. In a, this goes for all professions. There's a difference between an artist and making music and then or being a celebrity you know yes if you want to make music nobody's stopping you go make music you can go do that in a studio release an album release it on spotify apple music youtube whatever people will listen to it and people will enjoy it people will play it on the radio the fact of the matter is, is you stick your nose in social media, want to do the celebrity life and everything, and that's when it happens, and that's yeah. when people are like, oh, look at this, you know, lady who's full of crap and who treats her dancers. That's the thing. Either you want to be a celebrity and be famous, or you want to be an artist and make some wicked music, you know? Like, Decide you, like, what you, you don't do. see Rihanna pulling crap like that, you know? No. She goes and drops a, a who? single. Rihanna. Don't say who. She's a billionaire. She, She's a billionaire. She, she can does, do whatever though. she wants. She drops her music and she says, peace out. Bye. Enjoy that. You know? Yeah. And then she comes out with makeup and she's like, cool. Here's yeah. the makeup. Bye. I don't give a dang. I'm Riri. You exactly. know me. I do what I want. You know? Now, I'm going to guys... dance up on this thing. Pregnant, bruh. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, have you guys seen? This is kind of old. It's It's from February. Um, somebody is, she's a musical artist, uh, allegedly. I've never heard of this person. Suki Hana? No. So this artist, this, so I'm going to call her a celebrity. Uh, back in February, I saw, I saw this, uh, interview and it exploded because this poor, um, journalist is trying to interview her the journalist is bobby altoff okay and she calls her a musician you're a musician and what's her name suki hana flies off the handle oh no flies off the handle saying i don't know what you're talking about i'm a i'm a magician why are you calling me a musician and a she's magician. like because you make music and and good on bobby she didn't lose her cool or anything she said because you make music she's like no 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 you don't know what i do i don't know why you keep calling me a musician and it oh was i've just seen your really... act and oh i'm sorry you're 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 making magic out of the instruments happen oh excuse yes. me I, it I said apologize. no 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 actually actually this is this is the quote this is quote um Altoff, the the interviewer said, "You're a musician. That's why I'm interviewing today, so I can get to know you." And Sukihana said, "So I'm a musician. What the boop that mean? Make magic or something? What is musician?" And it's like, uh, what? And then the Altoff said, so "I think annoying. you're confusing that." And then she goes on to say, "Yeah, I'm no musician. I make music, and that's not all I do. I make music. I act. I'm a TV star too. A young mogul." Oh and I'm my like, gosh, give me a break. You're an <laughs> idiot. Yeah, that's when I'd be like, all right, end the interview. Bye. Sorry, you suck as a human. <laughs> you're obnoxious yeah, oh to talk gosh. to. So, yeah, that's. Bro, that's you're the lame. Nope. An Nobody cares. Loves you. A celebrity. 
No, oh I man, I'm also a business person. I got this line of makeup and perfume, bro. You need to be hawking this stuff, man. This is some good stuff. I got it from a sweatshop in Thailand. Here, this is called Pizzle. <laughs> Smell it. Mmm, yummy. <laughs> Stop. Where did that come from? I feel like this would be a South Park bit. <laughs> I, I don't think Oh, you've heard of Lizzo? Wait till you smell Lizzo with Slizzo. Oh, yeah. Mm, just rub that Slizzo all up in your body, bro. Crevices. Mm. Yeah, in the crevices. <laughs> in the hole, in the crevices. Mm. Mm, I mean, yeah. look, you're gonna and act like a, a dummy head. Is... I'll talk to you like a dummy yeah. head. Yeah, lift it up, lift it up, get it in there. Lift it <laughs> up. Oh my god. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought we were talking about music, not about all your business ventures. She's an entrepreneur. Well, you're you're a Bitcoin person too, you know? She's a yeah. Woman. She makes good music. Everybody. She's, she's not a not woman. A she's in though. everything. She's more. Oh, man. She's more she, than a musician. She, on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, she's a man. <laughs> on Thursdays and Sundays, then she's a woman. And every other day in between, she's whatever you want her she's to be. She's a magician. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, she's that. Yo, don't oh, paint me into no corner, man. I can do it all. All right? You don't know me. Oh, my gosh. That sounded accurate brian like you you've heard this before gosh Ugh, that is so obnoxious i can't stand yeah. that delete you should go watch that interview delete go watch goodbye it. delete no, uh, no same with you. lizzo delete goodbye whiner rich person whining it's kind of it's kind of the stuff that like daughter like these people that she like follows or knows about and i'm like who is this person oh it's blah 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 this person oh so what do they do i've never heard of them before and, and then you're like well, that's not really impressive it's i don't know maybe i'm just old but you know like this music you is are, okay yeah, yeah we 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 it's, both are that one I was like, no, like no, you guys, the, you guys, you guys know who Ice, Ice Spice is? Uh, yes, because I hear her name almost every day from my third through fifth graders. It, oh, or it's just like the Janelle Monae stuff we talked about a few weeks ago. Like, again, I'm still waiting for that Janelle Monae song to come out so I can be like, oh yeah, that's that jo that's that Janelle Monae, you know, that's on the radio. Still haven't heard it. Still haven't heard it. Waiting for it. Waiting for it. Probably not. That's the thing. You're probably not gonna hear it. But I mean, she's especially she's, not in Minnesota. No, Minnesota. Not on the Minnesota radios. No, but I think she's made herself more as an actor. But she would still not be like, oh, excuse me, hey, 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 whoa, 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 what language? I am an actress. Hey, hey, whoa, 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 no, I am an actor because I'm equal. Equal. So, don't you put me in a in a in a box. I'm not a musician. I'm also a very good crescent roll maker. And I make a well, like prove it. Boy. <laughs> prove it. Everyone knows. <laughs> Gordon Ramsay himself knows that I make a bomb crescent roll. Good. Good it's a bomb you. in my stomach. It hit so hard. It was a thud when it dropped. <laughs> uh, looks like a what turd to me. <laughs> All right, yeah. Light skin turd. If, you, if I've ever seen one. Ew. Oh my gosh. I didn't Jeez. like that word or phrase. Turd? No. How he <laughs> described it. Light skinned turd? Oh. <laughs> Ew. Did he go see a doctor? Well, he said crescent roll. Yeah, I understand don't, that. Don't poop and crescent rolls look exactly the same? I don't know what yours are looking like, but they're There's not supposed to look Never mind. Like that. Let's change the subject now. Anyways, you're the one who brought us on Lizzo. Freaking Lizzo. Sorry. Oh, you know what? I want to read some comments on there. But 
Let's keep going. I'm going to read some comments while I introduce this next one. All right. This one was like a, you know, type of record scratch. What the heck just happened? Star Wars Acolyte, okay, is canceled. What the heck? We just announced this show coming out. Is that for real? Week. That is for real. But it's not season one. You have to keep reading. Okay. Uh, canceled okay. before it's even released. Season two is not happening, partially in thanks to the negative responses to the trailer for season one. So that's still going to be releasing, I'm sure. While sources think it was just the internet trolling, Kathleen Kennedy does not see the humor and is questioning future Disney Plus Star Wars productions. Wow. I mean, it hasn't even hit yet. And yeah. they're like, ah, not happening. Not happening. Kathleen Kennedy. I think it looked good. It did look good. It did. And, and that's why um, everybody thinks, oh, it's just the internet trolling. Giving, like, thumbs down on the video and, and leaving weird comments. Um, nobody actually really thinks that. It actually looks like a decent, good show. Entertaining. Very well made. But she's like, uh, she she gonna do what Kathleen Kennedy gonna do. So, can't have nothing good. Mm. Yeah, that, that was guess. just like a what the heck type of thing to see where you're like, we just announced this and we're like, hey, this one looks promising. Some of the other ones, mm, kind of not that great, kind of sketch, whatever. You know, maybe we'll get some people on it, but definitely not everybody like Mandalorian or something. And then this one's like, hey, this one looks pretty cool. And you've got some stars that we all know. Love that. That looks cool. Cool story. Cool premise. Yada, yada. And then <laughs> thud. The crescent roll thud. Not good. Like, what? It didn't Ew, even hit the yet. It's not even thud. out. <laughs> yeah, the crescent roll thud. <laughs> Dropped right in the pit of our bellies. Man. So. It's kind of a shame. Kind of a shame. Like, this is the same thing with the Lizzo thing. The internet is a cruel place, okay? It is mean. It is honest. It's trolling. Whatever. Why do you have to read it? You don't have to read it. That's the thing. You don't have to engage with any of it. Yet, when you do... That's when it becomes personal. That's when it becomes, oh, my feelings are hurt. And just, just cancel the whole thing. I don't want to be a part of it anymore. Just, oh, just forget the whole thing. And breaking out into my Jimmy Stewart because he's always. He did oh. actually say that line. Yeah, just forget the whole thing. Fooey. <laughs> oh. So when when you we read could the run comments, into the water, we could we could even get naked. Run into the water. That's what he says. He didn't say that. He did. That's he did not exactly not. what he said. No. Something like no, that. He said we could take our clothes off. not what he said. And... No, he no. Said he said we could run barefoot. Yeah. We could take our shoes no. off. He what the heck, man? Naked. <laughs> he said naked. No, he didn't. What's wrong he with him? He said we could. This is, the, this is the 1940s. They don't talk like that. He said we could take our shoes off. <gasps> That's what that meant, though. Yeah. You know, that's that's like the end of one. Like get on the water. <laughs> hey, hey, hey! We just met. Whoa! Hold no, on. Take our, said, shoes take our shoes How off. Uncouth. And then they're gonna get the toes. Like they said, walk in the grass and feel the grass between our toes. And and then she's like, "Whoa!" Well, like then we can fill it in our yeah. butt cheeks. <laughs> mm. And he's like, "Oh, just for a Sounds like a good thing. Friday night to me. <laughs> We should put protection on our feet. <sighs> Stars and, and we can name the constellations. Well, well, that just sounds mad and crazy. Oh, just forget the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly how that went. And that's ex that's what this girl said while watching, while reading the comments. George Bailey being so fresh. How dare you? If only your mother knew. Yeah. Said how you talk to young girls. Katie's over there remembering the movie. We're getting naked. We're going <laughs> muddy. We're going in some water. Let's just take our shoes said. off. It was a little more wholesome than that. Okay. Golly. I mean, a nice skinny dip. I don't know. Let's see. No, it's not. No. What's a no. skinny dip amongst friends? 
Not in the 1940s, heck no. You Ugh, have scandals. Gross. And disease, like polio or All something. All right, let's do this Gosh. chunk, bro. Okay. Let's do this chunk. <laughs> yes, the chunk zone. It's finally here. But before we jump into the chunk zone, if you're not subscribed, all right, that means you're not part of the sibling hood. And we want you part of the sibling hoods. Become a sibling today by hitting that subscribe button. Just just give it a little Smack it right in the mouth. Like I'm going to smack this episode in the mouth. Give it a little, like little crescent mouth. roll tap and make it thud in the stomach. Thank you. If you've hit the subscribe the heck, button, man? thank you. The crescent roll was sent. And it is now in Lizzo's stomach. Thud. Ugh. Along with other chicken. There's a lot bones. of room there. <laughs> <laughs> then she's like, this is exactly why I'm quitting. And, and the person who just subscribed went, oh. And hit the unsubscribe. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, let's go into the chunk zone. So chunky. Like crescent rolls thudding in our stomachs. Chunky. Chunky crescent rolls. I've okay. got chunky feelings about this. Yeah, episode. apparently I don't so even... does Brian. What the heck? What? What? All right. I can't believe you, Brian. Episode so, five. So when you guys were texting, favorite? so when you guys were texting earlier in the week, you were like, "What the heck? This episode? Oh my god! This is horrible!" And I was like, "Deep." I didn't say anything. If you guys noticed, I did not text back oh, I anything. Noticed. And it was because, and as because. I went uh, mode. Like the crescent roll thudded too hard. <laughs> His Take opinions were too rolls. big. <laughs> they right, were too talk wrong. Brian, let's see. Is your robot voice gone? This episode wasn't half bad. This episode wasn't half bad. This episode was called Spirit. It wasn't perfect. It was not perfect. It wasn't perfect, but okay. So I liked let's it. break down then. Um, I actually kind of want to pull up last week's episode to see some of the questions that i asked yeah um, because when i do the show doc i do a breakdown you know so that way we can be organized i mean it's pretty that's, much the same things that's kind of what i want to do with but let's let's start at the beginning may i start yeah Go okay ahead. so this episode is called spirited away it's episode five of the netflix uh, adaptation of Avatar Last Airbender and it starts out with Aang, Katara, and Sokka running away from some firebenders and they're running, 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 they're being attacked and then all of a sudden they hop on Appa which was good. They, there was a lot more Appa in this episode which I liked, Finally. Appa and Momo. Loved it. Loved it. Um, and then they're like hey you're getting good at water bending, like just nonchalant, not out of breath, not concerned for their lives that they were just being chased. They're just like, I, I literally hey, thought wow. that too when that happened. Like, not, oh my gosh, we barely made it out of there. They were just like, Katara, you're really good at water bending. And it's like, what? The yeah, Aang literally says your water bending has gotten sharp. And it's like, um, oh yeah, thanks. Is no one gonna talk about what just happened? No one's going to acknowledge that. Appa, are you okay? Where's Momo? Nothing. Nada. Who's well, got the supplies? We haven't been... <laughs> we've been traveling for weeks. You know, That's on end. And we haven't seen an improvement. I thought, I thought this was right after what happened in Omashu. I thought they were just now leaving. But we find out later on uh, what happened through dialogue with Zuko. And when he goes into that bar thing... Um, that, yeah, they've been to the canyon, they've been to the volcano, they've been all over God's creation, and we have no I think, idea. I think that was more of, like, That legend, was a comedic thing, which or, I actually did get a yeah. slight chuckle from. Like, it was, like, now there, there's, like, to all these tall tales being told about them. That but you're missing my point. True. You're missing my point. We have jumped so far in time okay yes but it's no, not it, it's not even established that too. it's like the they're doing the opposite of show don't tell 
they're not showing anything and they're just telling random stuff that's happened. Well, they're if telling you, the wrong thing. Well, at least you, say if you oh, had never you know, we've been at the, this for weeks. If you had never watched the uh, watched the animated TV show and this is the first time you've ever been introduced to the world of Avatar, you're gonna be really confused as to what the heck is going on. Honestly, you're going okay. I'm still confused as to why Zuko is following them. Like. How is this tracking going? How is he finding them? How is he tracking them? Nothing of that is being spoken about. Aang, Katara, and Sokka, their dialogue with one another is not natural. It is very, very scripted. And it's yeah. awkward. It's actually extremely awkward to look at. Sokka can help it with a little bit of his lines sometimes, like with the humor and the questioning of like things going on, because he's actually like the one speaking usually on stuff. Like, is anybody thinking this is kind of weird? Where Aang and Katara are just like, la di da di da. Oh, something's happening, you know, and just accepting that it's happening, not even acknowledging anything. So if you're watching this for the first time, you're gonna be thrown all over the place extreme whiplash okay lots of crescent rolls have hit your stomach and you're very confused gosh get off the crescent rolls no and all it would take is one simple line or one visual saying we've been at this for weeks i'm so tired yes yeah, or showing uh, a I'll map of yeah where that's gone. i was just about to say to show a map of like where they've zigzagged all across the earth earth kingdom show. yeah like that's um it. like in the Tell. In the original show, Zuko says they're a master at um, deflection or something like that, yes. and they're actually lost. They don't even have to do that. Just you know, show a map going. We don't know where we're going. You know, no idea. Like that. Um, and then that shows that time has elapsed. They've been traveling all over the place. And they still don't know what they're and, doing. And it made sense for their dialogue in the TV show, too, when they started getting cranky with one another. They had been on Appa for such a long time, just flying. They're sick and tired of it. They want to see land. They want to rest, do something else. And they are they started getting cranky with one another. And that shows more progression in their characters as well, even though it's a very small thing. You can see that they can get irritated with one another. And... That's a good thing. That happens when you're in confined spaces with people. Even if you are friends, even if you do like each other, whatever, it still happens. And that shows something. I feel like we're just not getting anything. So I... Anyways, y'all continue. What's the next thing you want to talk about? What's the next thing that happens after they're on Appa? So they're... <clears throat> excuse me. They're on Appa and they're flying over this forest and they come across a giant burned area it is a it is a kind of curved line it is it is like a, a valley yeah and it is like a, a valley. deliberate big gash in the valley yeah yes it is a deliberate burn it's not just like a wildfire broke out and everything is random it is a deliberate burn and um this leads us into um the spirit world episode uh of I will, I the will original say i do like they are still continuing with how ruthless the Fire Nation is. and They hit hard on this one. And I like that they're still like, oh, and they'll do anything to get their way. They just burnt this whole forest only for the sole purpose of making it easier to travel. And it's like, gosh, that really does sound so horrible of like a human to do. And so ruthless and everything. And I, I like that they're doing that, making them seem very ruthless, intentional about that. They're just not intentional with anything else. And then, but here's where we get into just more irritating stuff. And I've been trying to give uh, the guy that plays Aang some credit, but here, it, this episode is his worst. He is just so flat emotionally. Yeah. The entire episode. He sees that all of this is happening. He's just like, I, sh I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. And I'm so I was supposed to prevent this. Yeah. <sighs> I would think a child would have more emotions because he's playing a 12-year-old. Crying. And anger. Do have something. A lot. Usually it's very unregulated emotions they can flip-flop very easily it's hard it's hard to do for a child actor to yeah. be able to 
do that especially and then have it come off and do it perform it without it coming off as whiny well then uh, better direction was go needed with, then that's it, I, honestly when you look at like the best child performances and films and tv that's why they kind of get passed over a lot because it, it definitely comes down to the director if you watch all like spielberg movies that's where there's a kid thinking. involved I was thinking of a Spielberg film. I'm it's not. Tea. It's not. It's not so much the child actors. It's Spielberg who knows how to pull performance, who knows how to speak to a child and pull out a performance from that kid where it's not something that's just like, uh, I'm so sad. Uh, but his it's glasses. more believable. He can't see without his glasses. I was specifically thinking of E.T. and how well all of those children acted in that film as as young as drew barrymore's character which i think she was like what five or six years old or something uh she was like seven or eight yeah yeah and she was she was phenomenal in that maybe role. Nine she ten. was a teeny tiny little girl um but elliot and the other ones were great as well and they were so young so i think direction or guidance or whatever you want to call it was definitely needed for something that is supposed to be an emotional scene like, he did a great job with the Gyatso thing because he was able to pull in those really, really strong emotions of grief and, like, immediacy. But for something that's still not as impactful but still a sad moment, I think he could... Well, you, you got to... Like, the best actors, they're able to pull from their own experiences yeah. of whatever life experience they have whether it's like a family member dying or whatever experience they've had where they're able to be like i'm gonna pull from this experience and use that in this performance to make this seem realistic the kids is so young god knows what they've gone through in their life and no most people don't really get to experience a forest fire and get to know that sense of huge loss like that so it's like the kid all right this you got so as a director you're gonna tell the kid look kid uh this kind of thing is on your shoulders so you got to feel the whole weight of all this pressure on the world mm -hmm. on you and so he's like okay i have nothing to go from so now i just have to like pretend to be like uh Helpless. shoot yeah. yeah this was on me i should know what to do but i don't know what to do because i'm the avatar and uh, yeah. so, but yeah. also I'm tired of that line he said that in every episode I don't know what I'm doing okay we get that let's move on Yeah. so let's, let's move, on. move on from that so now you know Katara's like oh there's the acorn okay and then now we're having conversations about the spirit world oh well first actually okay they, they run into the little girl and now we're in some little village that was being destroyed or whatever um, how did we feel about the way that looked and how that happened? I'm fine with it. Uh, that was rather minuscule. And the guy that was playing the dad, he did pretty good. I, I, I thought he was, you know, his lines, they were just kind of setting it up. Yeah. Whatever. Um, I kind of wasn't a huge fan of the way it was. <laughs> Basically, I like I like the animated version better of how well, it was set up. Duh. It just made more sense in my opinion. Oh, at the end of the day, the animated version trumps everything upon everything. Yes, yes. but I'm everything. Like, why do they the changes they make? I don't. This is the smallest understand. thing in the entire episode. I will let this slide. I just don't always understand it. I liked the one the one guy character, the village leader. He was. Yeah. 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 I don't right. like the way that they're changing the aesthetic of the villages. Yeah. You know what I mean? Really interesting. This is like a weird jungle vibe. Yeah, and just the way the well, buildings I thought it was look. Like a, and it looked like, like a northern forest. It's a very forest, thick kinda. forest. Yeah. But if you yeah. go back, it's it's in a like a there's a wall. Um, the way that the buildings look, they have a certain aesthetic, and that that aesthetic goes throughout the series. Here they're just like huts. Yeah. Yeah. You, oh my gosh! When you put it like that, like it's almost like it's Kyoshi just 
darker, you know, yeah. like Kyoshi with a little bit of different lighting. Like it's the same yeah. set. It and could it be the same like set. Wet. It's yeah. Wet. Well, you know, like a just like a They're wet. They're like, course. hey, drop the lighting, add some rain. Cool. Good to go. Oh New episode. My New gosh. episode. New episode. <laughs> Good job, everybody. Oh I'm no. You. Oh, we, Brian, oh, I'm gonna oh wreck this gosh. episode for you. You have no idea. No, because you know what? Watching it, watching it, I was like, oh, this man, they're actually in a real set. It looks really good. I, I mean, I'm still desperate for a god dang wide shot. Excuse my language. I really could use a wide <laughs> shot of the whole community to be like, oh, wow, here's the setting. Here's what we have to play I with. I think you're going to get that wide shot. Who's, who's really the and director? I'm like, do they have multiple directors for these? <laughs> oh, yeah, Dude, they do. That would be so the far, cinematographer, yeah, think... really. Yeah, but it's um, like, if I'm the director, all right, you know what? We're gonna. I want to do a shot of Appa flying in into the community, and I want to see a shot of the countryside and the village in reference to the community. That way, I see how far everything away is. And yeah. That way, you know, kind of your environment. They, they, of course, I they guess do they that. tried to do that with um, the looking out onto the forest and seeing the burn. That was a great but shot. But you don't see the village. I'll give, I'll give it credit. Yeah. No, because it's it's not there. Not there. Le, but but I will so yeah, let's see an credit. aerial shot. One. Let's. Uh, the, oh, I did like that. Let me see an aerial shot though of the village in reference to the burn. Because let's see how far close yeah. it is. You know, let's see the shrine. We get to the the Haybai shrine. To the you know, yeah. let's see there. But I'll, I'll, before we move on to though, so far everything. I kind of, I I enjoyed for the most part. Okay. So far, everything like I like said, the soccer this... stuff with the kid, the mm -hmm. soccer stuff with the kid worked really well. The it, village it leader guy organic. worked well. The beginning of this episode, but, I was like, I okay, okay, yeah. You know, you it know what? And everything with Ang, Ang, I liked the whole stuff with Katara. Here's the thing, though, that took me out of this episode. Because for the most part, I loved. I thought this was definitely a much better episode than the previous last week, which was such a stinker. Oh, that was but such here's a the one. thing that really, really irritated me so much is that we kept getting Azula stuff, and I'm like, why? Why are we getting Azula stuff That's right exactly now? What it just takes me completely phone. out of it. It is so unnecessary to do anything Azula right now. Because I had the story with Aang and the spirit world. I'm like, dang, I'm digging it. This is some good stuff. We're really recalling back to the animated show. There's all these callbacks to the animated show. We're getting... Even the Zuko stuff is fine. The Zuko and Iroh stuff like works and fine in context of the episode. In context of the episode, it works fine. But the minute... You go back and throw in this absolutely unnecessary Azula stuff, which I don't even need to see until next season. I mean, I, honestly, we don't, shouldn't see that till next season, yes. you know, at all, period. And we already it's know that just we're completely it takes me out of it. I mean, but... if you want to put it in, like, at the final episode or the penultimate episode of this season, sure. But, man, you take me out of how awesome and deep. This episode is supposed to be so deep. This is supposed to be a huge character-building episode for Katara and Sokka specifically. Yeah. And it's going great until I get Azula stuff. And then I'm like, what the for heck? For Katara? So no. This is a Katara episode. This is a Katara and Sokka episode. But it had Oh, big, it's not supposed to be. It, but it had big Katara scenes. So whether yeah. you liked it or not, it did. Now, let's back up, okay? Um, we'll talk about the Azula stuff in a second. Um, yes. Let's jump into yes, the we spirit will. world. So... What, we're not even there yet. Wait, what's what's next? What happened next? We we The very next scene after the uh, village... Is Zuko talking to uh, Lieutenant G and giving him grief, and that that I thought they were going to go into like the storm. I was like, "Is yeah, that Agni Kai? Is that where we're going?" And and Brian, before I continue, here's my overall problem with this episode, and it's gonna set us up for the rest of the rest of it. They 
made so many references to as many episodes as they could it was like a bingo card it was a yeah. bingo card of but like Brian, episodes but Brian Not just said how he kind of liked that no okay if if it were organized and executed well sure but it was not and it was messy and that took me out um they even made a reference to the legend of Korra and I'm like are you freaking kidding me are you kidding me pick a plot line so we saw um odes to the swamp the southern raiders yes yes um, the siege of the north the siege of the north yeah ready. It, the i mean desert. i i lo- i do like all the i do like the callbacks but like but I agree 100% with Katie. They're so unorganized. They're kind of just like, we're going to throw everything against the wall in this episode. Everything and, then, and whatever sticks, sticks. And what you know? is but God going to set us up for in future seasons? And I get it. I get it that they're trying to get season one wrapped up. Like, okay, season one has a lot of episodes. But it just started. Year. But season it, one just started but it has a lot of episodes in the original series and they're trying they're trying to tr- to hit those main ones or at least make a but, little short reference to them so they can condense the season and be done with then why are the they referencing season two and three that's a good question that's my question. That's my point. Why are if you have all of this that you all of this material? Because okay, let's say they're trying to squeeze as much content in as possible so that they don't. But have you don't to need to do that. That's, that's be, probably you don't what need their thought to. process is. And no, no, no. That thought process, their thought process is completely and it's bad. But they're trying to say, hey, it's wrong. let's see how we can shorten this by, okay, we're going to talk about how uh, we're in the spirit world awesome but let's also make it very reminiscent of the swamp okay and now we're going to also talk about how um now we're seeing then visions. don't then so what about let's talk just about don't do the swamp then swamp. yeah it's just unnecessary. cut the, the only, swamp the entirely that, then the only thing really when you boil it down the only thing that the swamp does is eludes not even introduces eludes to toff that's yeah. it but it even gives us like another. You so know, you can cut that. But it gives that, us a that long is a completely. Thing. That no, is a completely I, cuttable I sequence. Disagree. Then you don't the, even need the swamp. Then I would disagree. The swamp also shows us the kids' mentality of their longing. Okay. So, but we already knew that. But it just helps establish it even more. Actually, hold that thought, because did you catch that line? Uh, that um, Katara said about Sokka hitting on that girl. Yeah, I was like, and what? I was like, Are I you didn't know she was Fire Nation. Oh yeah, <laughs> I'm going to throw up <laughs> because. Gosh, man, why? Now when we talk about it, it's like, <sighs> oh no, it gets worse, Big Brother. It wait, gets wait, no, wait, but wait, the wait, thing is, this wait, episode, why? this why episode had the guys? ability. But, but what? What do you mean, Eliana? That? What do you mean? It's not a problem. I want you to say why. Okay, I'm just saying this episode had the possibilities to be awesome. It did. I thought there were so many moments they could have took with this episode where they were like, "Yes, this works." Like when the when you do these flashbacks with Katara and Sokka, they worked. They're emotional. There's a lot of stuff going on there yeah. that I works. disagree. We'll get that. Absolutely, all the Zuko stuff all works. All, but to me personally, the Katara and Sokka stuff worked, and that's why I love the episode because it was really emotional and I, 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 it did reinforce stuff about their characters. But then between each of those moments. There's just this stuff that's just like filler, but it doesn't need. I want more it's of. Not good I need filler. more. It's not. It's just 
it's just redundant and uh, just breaks my heart because because we man, had they, they have filler episodes in between each really major and, and right episode. now and and right now there's we know we got a, a blue mask up blue mask episode we got at least a two-part northern water tribe episode and i think that's is it. that there's it that's episodes. three yeah, that's and three this was episode five. that's three episodes left and so we already know the next episode is the blue spirit and he's got a rescue instead of sock and Katar being sick he's got to rescue them instead and zuko's gonna come in handy with that after the lady helps track them down then you got two episodes of and that's it that is season one of this show and i feel like i barely know ang mm -hmm. i feel like i know Saki because he's at least very surface level and now at this point i know katara but Aang I, is I wouldn't even whiny, say that I really indecisive know little boy. He is whiny and indecisive. I don't know what He's, to do. They're kind of making him an unlikable character. Yeah. In a weird way. Like, he's charming for being a little boy and having a heart. But, but he's a, never, you know, he's never given a chance to be, like, charming, he's never, though, He's either. never been a hero. Let's say that. He has not been a hero yet it has always been someone else saving the situation mm -hmm. so or let's think about it when he was at kiyoshi it wasn't Ki it wasn't ang who saved the island it was kiyoshi as you know in the avatar state or whatever we have not seen ang be powerful yet his bending has not really been all that great either and I feel like we're missing a whole lot <laughs> of the bending. Where is the bending? And you know, you know what, too? A lot of those moments in the cartoon about Aang where you get to know his personality is kind of in those there's those times when he's on Appa and they have all that time to fill as they go from one village to the next. Yeah. And you never get those moments where Aang is like, hey, Katara, look what I can do. Yeah. Or he's making a necklace for Katara because yeah. she lost it. That's when you get to really know those moments about Aang. Like, man, he's very fun. He's generous. He's super kind. Mm -hmm. You know, he defends Appa. Like, nobody ever taught, makes fun of Appa or while even, Aang is there. Cause... Or even in the Zhang so, Zhang episode where you see how impatient he is and how impulsive he is. That is another character trait. It's a flaw, but it at least helps yeah. establish he's a child so, who wants to get this over with. Right now, Aang is very bland. Yes. Well, let's 100%. let's move on because we are right now... Just, just I'm moving along with the with the length of the episode. We still have 43 minutes left. Ugh. Well, we gotta wrap this episode. Up. That's why I'm saying we've got to hurry up. Okay, so then we go. There's for some reason, unknown, ungodly reason, we go to the Fire Nation, and Azula is having a conversation with the Fire King or Fire Lord, excuse me. Fire King. And this. <laughs> The, okay, they want to have a scene, fine. Here's where they drop the ball on this scene. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Azula said something to um, Fire Lord Ozai. And he, when she was about to leave, he says, And Azula, it was your brother that found the Avatar. Like, giving him credit yeah, for something. And I was like... No. Are you kidding me? My Fire Lord Ozai would have never. <laughs> would have never. <laughs> He's Hamill giving, giving credit, credit. Giving to credit Zuko to Zuko. Yeah. Saying that when he, did something he good. doesn't even give him a second thought. Yeah. He doesn't care about his son. He does not care about his son. And so what happens is Azula gets jealous and she starts um, beating up this guy and 
May and Ty Lee, for some reason, are there and they save her. Like, they that calm was her down. That's such a weird And I'm scene. like, I'm like, what, what the heck is going on? I hate this so much. I want to throw I, up. I did too. I, it, it, it was so it unnatural. Me. It was so very bad. unnatural <sighs> to watch the girls be like, Azula, what are you doing? You must stop. The only way that I can well, see this, the, the only way I can see this working is if you make the argument, well, when at the very end in season three, looking ahead again in season three, when um, she was like, but it was my idea to burn Boston State to the ground. It was my idea to set everything on fire. And he's like, Azula, silence. Oh, she good. wants that she wants that approval from her dad but it's not it's not in this way yeah we're not we're not there yet we have not established but, Azula as the but he's person. even like Azula I don't like people that are sniveling and yes. telling lies and everything and I was like <laughs> wait a minute everything he does is praise her in fact he's the same thing he's the same sniveling little weasel yeah. that went to his dad and is like dad you should make me the fire lord instead of her or of him of iroh so wait a minute wait, wait, you're telling me that you just scratch the entire thesis of the character the who they are like no 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 no. we don't do that we don't do that here azula no we follow you know like pretty much he's saying once your brother does catch the avatar, he will be welcomed with open arms and right back where he belongs here. My like, boy. what the fudge? Are you kidding me? That's that completely not wrong. True. Not true. Yes. So, moving on before I... Like, my, you, my do you blood really vessel think, is going to burst, but we need to continue. Do you really think the Fire Lord would have given his son an impossible task and be like, yeah, he'll be back in no time. Yeah. <laughs> I can't wait to have him back. Kid. So, huh. so then it jumps back to Sokka, Katara, and Aang, which amazingly, they're all together momentarily. They're all together in the same room and they find uh, Heibai's uh, shrine and you see that it's burned and eventually Aang gets into the spirit world, but somehow, hijinks, japes. Freaking Sokka and Katara magically end up there as well. And yeah. in the original, yes, Sokka is kidnapped by Heibai, yeah. the panda spirit, and is taken into the spirit world. Um, they don't just pop in, you know? Yeah, it wasn't um, like by mistake. Oh, you accidentally came with me. What? Accidentally? How does that happen? Oh, maybe yes. you were too close or maybe your spiritual energy. What? And then what? in another whiplash moment, we are back with Zuko and, Oz or, and Iroh. <sighs> we are back there. They go to the bar, and that's where they find out. Zuko wants to keep the, the Avatar thing a secret, but everybody knows. We find out yeah. there. Um, this is where we find out um, the other references about being at the volcano and being... Uh, in the canyon yeah. and all kinds of other places but we do get the best person thank Jesus for this human we get June and her sheer shoe which was awesome Yeah, that was. I good. will say that um, but then it we only good. get her for like it three seconds good. before for some bleepity bleepin reason we're back in the spirit world, and who do we come across? Wan Jitong, he who knows 10,000 things, who is supposed to be in the desert, in a library that is sunken underneath the sand. Yeah. That was but I, I didn't mind it. I didn't mind world. it. I understand. It didn't bother me. It does bother me because it sets. it doesn't set up for season two. <laughs> It Where's doesn't bother me. I, I I dealt with it. I de I was like, I'm gonna I can handle this. It's just fine. This yeah. is good. Now it was I, a I cool. Didn't like it's okay. They cool. couldn't wow. hear the. I I didn't like how they, it was just like bird sounds. I wish they could have understood him as well, so they could feel like the gravity of like where they are and be like freaking like. Not only is it a big bird, it's an intelligent being that could kill us. Um, like watch the heck out while you're here. 
um, instead of just being like, what's he saying to us? But he did look really cool, and I think it's the original voice actor, so I'll give it that. Yeah. The rest of it? Yeah, no, it was good. (laughs) I liked it. I thought it was really neat. It was good. Um, one thing I didn't really yeah, like they did was good with that. Sokka talking to that wolf, wolf, fox. It's a fox thing. Thing. I liked it. I liked that. That was cool. I didn't like, didn't that. like it. I didn't care for it. Could have done I liked it. it. I liked it a lot. It wasted, I liked so that kind of stuff. It wasted screen time. <laughs> we need to save all the screen time we possibly can. <laughs> but again, you know, it's like, this is good character stuff. I mean, they know how to do, they know how to do Sokka. They exactly. can nail Sokka. No, they They're on the wrong character. We've seen too much Sokka. We know Sokka's he, character. He's not difficult. Sokka, Sokka is easy to write. Yes, he's and that's easy why they to keep act. Doing it. Huh. And yeah, maybe that's it because yeah, it's so easy. So, but it's like, God, yeah, this kid's a natural. This, yeah, this doing good work here. You know. Sokka for life. Yes. Sokka, you're great. Yo, yo, but this is could Aang, you ever sorry. see Aang or Katara do that exact same sequence with the the fox thing? Heck no. Heck no, you can. But no, why because, not? Because we, then... We were just saying that Aang is not given any opportunity. He could be right. like, oh, what a cute little fox. And he'd be like, come here, fox. Come here. And then, you know... Yeah, wh- why it. don't they? I don't yeah, understand why point. they don't do that. <laughs> They're just not doing it. They're just not doing it so now after the fox little creature after meeting what well no we, ha- we haven't even gotten to the daggum fox yet okay move we're, this we're jumping along ahead. hurry up no okay but I, i'm saying you're jumping ahead so then again with whiplash you see what the state of my hair is <laughs> again with the whiplash that's when we go back to the fire nation and Azula is beating up on that guy officially now, and okay, we she's, about she's that. safe. So yeah, and then another whiplash. We go back to Iro and Zuko. We're not even halfway through the episode. Hurry, we have nine minutes to wrap this yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and then after that, then we go back to the episode of uh, the Southern Raiders, which yes. This would have been excellent in another episode. I agree. It should have been somewhere else. It, it, in no, somewhere. No, and this I w- would have no. been sublime. This was fine in this episode because it was its saving grace. Gosh darn it. <laughs> yes. This. So oh, Katara, I, I had tears streaming down. My it jaw so dropped. When I was like, this is so over. well done. Yes, it was, and, and that's it was why very I say well it, shot. Very it was sublime. Very suspenseful. But wrong place, wrong time. And can I just say, Sokka's was so wrong. They did. Sokka's they did it so, so wrong. bad, so bad. Why did they do that to Sokka? Why did they make him I'll, such I'll a failure? I'll let you explain it. Child, explain. I don't understand why. You hear like, oh, good job from Hakoda and Bato being like, uh, and then Sokka walks away and everybody's making fun of him. Sokka could have killed all of us today. What the heck was that? Sokka's supposed to be, yeah, he's clumsy and such and such, but now they're bad mouthing him behind his back. That was never a thing. How Hakoda, freaking deflating. Hakoda he got his, always he was got like, his Sokka, mark. you're my son. And you know, I'm going to put you up here the, any way I can to push you up higher to being the leader I know you can be. But then he just destroys his character to Bato, and that made them both look really bad. That made them both look so distasteful. And that's not how Sokka's, how Hakoda's. I wonder if that was all real, though. Like, was that like the, a real flashback? Because it was almost like too much. Like, you know. I, I just I, didn't I get it. Know. I did not. I mean, I liked Again, it. I liked I, I liked the scene, but it was like this doesn't make much. This is totally out of character for well, who Coco It and does Bato not make be. any sense in any context. So he passed, but he almost killed everyone. Yeah, and nobody had one good thing to say about him, but he passed. But and they said it all behind his back. The bad. Things. Yeah, and, and if like it that. wasn't real. There's nothing to tell us that. 
There's yeah. nothing to show us that. Yeah. Even, that that is his insecurity. Even pushing forward, we see um, Aang talking to Gyatso. Okay, and was that real? Is Gyatso really there? You see, he Gya said he was real, but do we believe it? Right, and at the very end, when he's like telling Aang, "Hey, you're you're gonna you're gonna I'm gonna see you again, right? Like, I'll come back and find you someday." And Gyatso's kind of like looking like <laughs> goodbye now, goodbye, yeah. goodbye. <laughs> yes, definitely. And then, in then moving along, and I'm gonna try to speed this up. I We've promise. Got five minutes. I'm gonna try to speed this along. I freaking hate this episode. At the end of each of their flashbacks, um, Katara and Sokka are met with Ko for no freaking reason and acting yeah. like he's Shelob from Lord of the Rings just collecting these bodies to eat them later. Yeah, that was weird. And um, so Aang goes and meets Gyatso. This is his flashback or reality. Who the heck knows? And Gyatso gives him some wisdom that's not really helpful. And uh, we never, we don't, we saw Heibai like one time. We saw the scary Heibai. We never saw Panda Heibai. Not once. And then um, Aang goes and he gives the acorn to, uh, it just puts it in front of the statue, but nothing really comes of it. And then we get another flashback to the Fire Nation. We get another jump to Iroh and Zuko. We even get a daggum jump over to um, Admiral Zhao. Just a brief one. Um, and then we realize, you know, it's Ko the Face Stealer. Uh, somehow we have all of these things mixed in here. We have Ko the Face Stealer, which is its, its own thing. Aang has to save Sokka and Katara, their bodies or their spirits are still in the spirit world. Their bodies are still on Earth. He's got to find a way to get them to save them. He's going into the Fire Nation to go visit the Fire Temple. That's where he's headed next. There is so much going on, and they ruined Ko the Blasted Face Stealer, and he's the best thing in the I, first season. I hated how they didn't talk about the koi fish. Like that's such a well. That's not. They're not. No. 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 No, bad but sister. No, no, I'm saying they brought him in too early. We didn't even get to hear yes, the conversation. They, he we don't need the koi fish. Here. Take Ko Because out. you're supposed to get the, the push. Yeah, the Ko tides. is a completely unnecessary. Why don't you save him for the final two episodes? And they ruined the him end. anyway. Okay, even if you wanted to bring him in here, he's supposed to give his own form of wisdom to the Avatar. Yes, because now, now they're going to have to find a different remedy for how we get that information. Is it going to be like from Iroh or something that they're going to say, oh yeah, he went to the spirit world one time and somehow he knows or something because they're going to have to fix it. Okay, now they ruined that one aspect of it. Now they have to find a way to tell us this information that makes sense. And, and now it's not my be coming from Ko. And my final thing. <sighs> Roku was supposed to tell Aang about Ko and say don't show any emotion or he's going to steal your face. Yeah. And that's what makes him so menacing as well. And that's what makes Aang such an amazing character as well. There's yeah, there's no lead in. There's no suspense built there's into no, the character like, at all. Hey, he just pops out of nowhere. Some random centipede character that, yeah. Just if popped in and is trying to be a menace. If you're just menace. watching it for the first time, you're going to be super confused. Yes. So, I hate I hate it. <laughs> I was telling you, Liana, um, earlier, Brian. Do you remember in? Uh, no, you don't like that movie. How the Grinch stole Jim Carrey's How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Yeah. Um, well, there's a flashback to Garish. where the Grinch is a little kid, and he goes, "I hate Christmas. I hate it." That's that's what I was thinking. Just this this whole time I've been watching this show, man. I just. <laughs> All right, Brian. Did you have any final I thoughts? Look, I there were, I did enjoy lots of parts of the episode. And as we talk about it more, I'm like, eh, there's parts. It, to me, it's still an improvement over the previous episode from last week, which I thought was 
bottom of the barrel as far yeah, as this season's the gone sure. i thought i thought like there's a lot of stuff that happened this episode i did like that worked well to me the the one thing that kind of jolted me out of the episode was the azula stuff because it's completely unnecessary 100 yeah. percent. everything else i can kind of forgive and understand what they were trying to do so all in all just much better improvement over the previous episode La the previous episode from last week that one i fell asleep in this one got my attention the whole time well time will tell for us when we talk about episode six <laughs> in next week's episode katie's over here crying because she's afraid of what they're gonna ruin so we'll talk about that one <laughs> next week but um yeah thanks for listening to this week's episode if you have not hit the subscribe button please become a sibling today hit the subscribe button support the channel leave comments down below did you enjoy this episode or do you agree with us in disliking it i would love to know what you think please let us know in the comments below we've got brian in this corner the koi fish we've got kt down below why couldn't it have been me? Take me instead. <laughs> and I'm Ileana, your host, signing off on yet another bad episode of Netflix, The Avatar, <laughs> <laughs> The Last Airbender. And we will see you in next week's episode. Bye-bye. <laughs>